welcome back to my channel. I've just been out, hence the fact that I'm still wearing my hat. <laughs> I can't, haven't taken it off yet. Um, yeah, when I got back, um, I was quite excited actually because uh, through the post, uh, I've received my uh, Covent Garden uh, Super Collection, which is like this big box um, containing four books. So it's the whole Covent Garden Super Collection of recipes, and because I'm really, really into soup. At the, even more so at the moment, I don't know why, it's kind of become a really big thing for me. Like, I'm a bit obsessed with uh, soup and porridge and things like that. I've always been obsessed with porridge and oats for a long time now, but like, um, I'm also getting really into making soup. I say obsessed, by the way, not in a not in the negative sense, in the sense that I just, just to emphasise that I'm really into it, basically. Um, so yeah, so uh, I might show you that at some point. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, in this video, um, I wanted to carry on um, sort of looking at this book, the Stim book, um, that I began to review last week and then unfortunately my videos kept cutting out because I often like can't keep track because I'm only doing it on the camera and it's got limited memory so <laughs> yeah I try, I try and keep it succinct but sometimes I overrun so it runs out of me. But yeah so to carry on looking at um, Stim and Autistic Anthology for where I finished off last time. So in last week's video, um, I was uh, the video ended when I was talking about uh, Nelly, a woman called Nelly who's autistic, and about her interests and about um, she was kind of critiquing a stereotype of autistic interests. It's often associated with things like trains and Star Trek and stuff like that, and how her interests um, are, are are not the sort of stereotypical image of what an autistic interest is, and yet her interests are just as um, intense and just as all-consuming for her. It's just because the subject matter is not part of the stereotype. But hopefully, I, as time goes on, people will realise that actually autistic interests can be literally anything. And it's not the subject matter that determines the... It's not the subject matter that's important. It's the intensity of the interest in the way the interest takes over someone's life. That's characteristic of autism. Obviously, non-autistic people can experience this as well. It's not just... It's not unique to autism, but then again, you take any symptom of autism and it's not unique to autism anyway, but along with all the other symptoms of autism, that's what's significant, it's the intensity of the interest, the way it takes over someone's life, not the focus of the interest per se. Um, and yeah, and she was talking about how, um, what I found quite interesting, because I could relate to it, was how, was when she was talking about how, um, she has like a kind of anchoring interest, in her case, for example, say T Taylor Swift, um, anchored by one figure, one person, one celebrity, um, but how an interest can actually expand from that, and that, I could really relate to that because I've talked elsewhere about how my interest in Kate Winslet, I just, I've described as being like a mother interest, in the sense that the Kate Winslet interest is what spawned my other like obsessions, that came out of that, most notably babies, because after Kate Winslet had a baby, I got interested in babies, and when Kate Winslet went to live in New York, I read a lot about New York. Um, so all these like micro interests, and you know, that came out from Kate Winslet, like I read Thomas Hardy, I read Judy Obscure, because Kate Winslet performed in Judy Obscure, um, one of Kate Winslet, Kate Winslet, one of Kate Winslet's films was Jude, um, based on the Thomas Hardy book, novel Judy Obscure, so I, I went and read Judy Obscure, I read Therese Waquin because Kate Winslet at one point was going to do a film, Therese Waquin, it never actually got done, but because Kate Winslet was considering doing a film, I then ended up reading the novel Therese Waquin, um, do go and check that novel out by the way, it's very dark, but it was a good book. So that's how an interest can then kind of like spiral out from the initial interest, obviously the Kate Winslet obsession itself came out from an earlier interest in the Titanic, the historical event, and then it just kind of you know, so it kind of like, it's almost like you could draw like a sort of spider diagram or something, or like a, a flow chart, or a tree maybe, um, of showing how all the interests kind of come out, you know, kind of one interest births another interest and so on. So what starts to say, because people often talk about autistic interests as being very narrow, and yeah, they can be narrow. My, when I was obsessed with Kate Winslet, it literally took over all my life, and I couldn't really get interest in anything else unless I could relate it in some way to Kate Winslet, but if it could be related to Kate Winslet, then I would get interested in it. So... Narrow on one hand, but that's not the whole picture because it can like spawn other interests. So I could really relate to that. Um, and, and also, as I touched on in the other video, Nelly talks about how um, how these days, you know, she's fascinated by fandom. Um, but I've never 
never really been into fandom. Uh, she talks about how she can feel overwhelmed by curiosity, um, almost like feeling ravenous, so she can spend days at the office, because she works in an office, not doing the work. Actually, I'm going to take my hat off, it's really annoying me now, so I just take my hat off. <laughs> she can feel overwhelmed, yeah, ravenous, for example, she can spend days at her office not doing work, um, taken, her whole life being taken over by the new subject, uh, watching videos on YouTube, for example. Um... So yeah, I can relate to that sense of kind of ravenous need to almost like devour information, like where your brain feels like it's running at top speed and you need to take in everything. And it could kind of make you feel kind of rather like full of energy because it's just so, whoa, it's like intoxicating. I can really relate to that. Um, she talks about how the easy an easy access to fandom, um, how her interest provides her with an easy access to a fandom, a network of people who want to talk about anything Taylor because her obsession was Taylor Swift. Um, and, she kept, and on page 62, she wondered why being part of a community like this is an unestablished autistic stereotype. But she doesn't think there really are intrinsically autistic interests. So she's being a little bit tongue-in-cheek here, but she, she doesn't think there really are intrinsically autistic interests. But she says that it is telling that certain subjects and even fandoms are synonymous with autism and others haven't been associated with autism, even when they share qualities. So the actual intensity of the interest is just the same. Um, but the subject, because the subject isn't stereotypical, is not associated with autism, which she thinks is rather odd. And she's, she relates this back to the extreme male brain theory, which she says plays a part, because autistic people are said to be near the male end. Um, and so then, so that's coupled with the categorising of different interests as male or female, and this shapes people's expectations about what subjects an autistic should enjoy, because autistics are associated, uh, because autistics are stereotyped as being, um, like, extreme male. They're then said to be particularly interested in male subjects because of this stereotype. So two stereotypes like joined up here really, the stereotype of what men and women are supposed to be interested in and the stereotype of autistic people as being extreme male because of the Simon Van Cohen hypothesis which um, has been widely criticised um, and I disagree with it 100%, I just think it's too, uh, too simplistic really. Um, and also this belief that autistics are unemotional and robotic. So, how could any of us be intensely interested in a person, she asks. Um, and she, she said that it's probably because of, a represent, because of these representations in the media that um, equate autism with extreme maleness, because this might be part of the reason why people tell her that she doesn't seem autistic. Maybe, you know, because she isn't going on about trains, she isn't, you know, going on about, I don't know, electricity pylons or whatever, she happens to be very interested in people, um, particular celebrities, and yes, I can relate to that a lot, um, because all of my interests, I've, whenever I get interested in something, it's always extremely intense, um, very, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> narrow, I guess you could call it, I mean, what I mean is I get very, very highly focused on a particular routine. Um, these days it's more routines um, that I get fixated on as opposed to, I mean I have particular areas, the areas I'm interested in are not as, maybe not as, quite as narrow in inverted commas as they used to be, but I do get very highly focused on particular routines, that seems to be what I get particularly focused on at the moment, but I've always had, I've always been fixated on something, whether it be uh, a very narrowly defined interest, uh, which is more of a case in the past, or whether I just happen to get fixated on particular routines, which is more the case now. I've always been fixated on certain things, um, which is very much part of my autistic condition, I guess, <laughs> along with the social problems. Um, but my interests have never fallen into the sort of stereotypical category. I guess Titanic came closest to the kind of stereotypical kind of fact-driven type of interest. Um, but the way I've gone about my interest has been stereotypically autistic, if you want to call it that. It's just that the subject matter hasn't been. So I went baby spotting. I didn't go train spotting. I went baby spotting. The only thing that would dis distinguish me from a train spotter was the subject, not the actual way I went about it, which was the same. Um, so I do think we need to get away from this idea. Because often like, when I tell people about my obsession with Kate Winslet, they all go, oh, that seems pretty normal. You know, it seems pretty normal to me, they say. Because, you know, many teenagers get interested, get very interested very passionately interested, some might, you know, possibly even to the point of obsession in movie stars and things. But that kind of, in a sense, doesn't quite... When they say, oh, that's, that seems normal, 
um, it's really hard for me to actually explain to them the difference. The there is a, there is a difference with for, there is a difference within an autistic interest. It's not the same as non autistic interest. My brother was really interested in Bruce Springsteen for a really long time, to the point of obsession, constantly playing his songs and stuff. But it diff but it was different to my interest in Kate Winslet because he could still do other things. He wasn't like limited by his interest. He could still do other things, and um, it didn't. It, it's just a different thing. It's really hard to try and explain to people the difference, but it is a difference. Like, my parents noticed the difference between my interest and my brother's interest. Even though my brother um, did have, like, obsessive interests and stuff, there is still a difference when it's, like, an autistic interest. Um, like, I would literally... Like, for example, because Kate Winslet... Because Kate Winslet had a baby, I got really interested in babies to the point where I'll be listening to nursery rhymes on repeat and I will be collecting dummies and baby stuff of baby magazines and hoarding them and keeping them that's that's, that's just one example of how an autistic interest differs to a non-autistic obsession it's the it's the absolute devotion and intensity and like often it involves collecting kind of things other people might see as maybe a little bit odd for some developmental age so like i don't think most well i mean there might be some but the majority of like average 14 15 year old kids who get interested in a movie star aren't going to be listening to nursery rhymes on repeat when that movie star has a baby so that's just one example of how my interest differed and also most 14 15 year olds aren't going to be following people down the high street taking notes on their babies detailed notes so there is this difference and um i do have to try and explain to people how it's not like a normal interest because i sometimes find that normal in inverted commas because sometimes i find that when people like say oh that seems perfectly normal to me I kind of feel in a way it kind of devalues my experience because it was different and while I know they're trying to be nice and they're trying to make me feel like oh it's nice you're normal and everything um like it kind of feels because it's part of my history it's part of my experience it's part of what set me apart from other people I kind of feel like it's missing a point a bit and um yeah devaluing my experience as an autistic person which is fundamentally different to what most like non-autistic people experience or go through and i think maybe if a teen as a teenager if someone tried to tell me my interest in normal i would have liked it because at that point i was denied and i did want to be in a quote unquote normal but now as an adult like i don't i, I actually don't like it because when i'm telling someone about the intensity of my interest i want them to listen to my experience as an autistic experience not for them to try and trivialize it and tell me that it's the same as everyone else when we know for a fact that it's not the same as everyone else and it's part of the reason what led to me getting diagnosed along with my social problems is the way my interests take over my life so I just kind of feel like when people say that they're not fully understanding my autisticness as it were and are trying to kind of like devalue it whereas if I was like say a man I don't know who happened to be obsessed with electricity pylons um I don't know but it just annoys me anyway. I, I can't quite explain to you why it annoys me, but it just feels like it's trivialising the intensity of the interest. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. Um, I think that's uh, because of a stereotype about autistic interest and certain things. So if you have an interest that's more quote-unquote typical in subject matter, it's harder then to convey to people how it differs from the norm, how it differs, say, from your average teenager who's really into a particular movie star. And, and then like, I'll have to kind of elaborate on it and say, yeah, but I listen to nursery rhymes on repeat, da, 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 and I have to go and I have to try and explain it to them just to show them how it isn't like your average interest, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to move on to video number two now.